Hi, in this video, we continue with consumer choice theory and uh, specifically we are going to focus on uh, indifference curve analysis. Now, this is uh, still a development of the ordinal approach to uh, consumer theory. So we start by looking at indifference curve analysis, which were developed by Higgs. And uh, an indifference curve is a locus of points showing the combination of two commodities that yield the same level of satisfaction to the consumer. Indifference curves tell us that consumers pick what they prefer. Now, what this means is that uh, given the consumer's uh, choice, the consumer will have different commodities from which he or she has to uh, choose from. The way the consumer is going to be picking, if you told the consumer pick the bundles or pick the commodities that you like the most and leave out those that you don't, it means the order of picking will tell you about the consumer's behavior. And the, the way the consumer will be picking, that will be in the order of the ranking. And therefore, we say ordinal utility has no measures uh, in terms of, no units in terms of measuring utility, but measures through ranking. So the first to be picked gives the consumer the most uh, level of utility. So let's draw an indifference curve. So on the vertical axis, we put a good Y and on the horizontal, we put good X. Now for an indifference curve, uh, for this consumer, you have a downward sloping indifference curve and uh, we have three points that we've drawn here. So both point, all the points A and B, as well as B and C, have equal level of satisfaction. All points that will be above this line, this curve, and all points below will yield different levels of satisfaction compared to points A, B, and C. And the difference curves and the difference maps are used to graphically represent preferences. So the consumer would easily indicate that I prefer a point, say point D, which is above compared to point B. And the consumer can also tell you that between A and B, I'm indifferent. Meaning, if you give the consumer two different commodities, the consumer would be okay to take either of the two because he or she is indifferent. But if you presented a bundle D to bundle B, the consumer will simply indicate that he or she prefers bundle D because it is on a higher path and gives the consumer more utility. Consider a case of you going to a restaurant and uh, you want to take uh, either coffee or tea. Given the menu, you will have a choice to make between taking coffee or taking tea. If you say you want to take coffee, it means you have demonstrated your preference to coffee. If you say you want to take tea, it means you have demonstrated your preference to taking tea. But if you tell the waiter or the waitress that give me either tea or coffee, it means you will be equally satisfied if you take either tea or coffee. And therefore, in this last illustration, you are indicating that Tea, you are indifferent between tea and coffee. Okay, so an indifference curve is a set of all bundles that make a consumer indifferent. Bundle A, bundle B, and bundle C make the consumer indifferent. And therefore, the consumer will be okay to take any of the bundles because they will give the consumer equal satisfaction. If we plot all indifference curves, we get what we call an indifference map, which is a set of different indifference curves. In this case, we have uh, indifference curve 2, indifference curve 3, and indifference curve 4 coming into the picture. You will notice that on indifference curve 2, uh, I have put uh, bundle D and bundle E to help you understand how we are distinguishing the utility levels. So here, we say that A, B, and C yield equal utility, 
In the same way, D and E yield equal satisfaction gives the consumer equal satisfaction. But bundle E and bundle C have different levels of utility. And specifically, bundle E has more utility compared to bundle C. In this case, we can uh, therefore generalize that all bundles on a higher indifference curve have more utility compared to bundles on a lower indifference curve. If we move to indifference curve 3, all bundles that are on indifference curve 3 will have more utility levels compared to those on indifference curve 2 and indifference curve 1. In the same way, all bundles on indifference curve 4 will have more utility levels compared to the other lower indifference curves. So, we conclude that the higher the indifference curve, the more the utility levels generated by the consumer. So, this is the direction of increasing utility. If we add another indifference curve here, it means that indifference curve will mean that the consumer gets more utility from it compared to the other indifference curves. So let's look at some properties of indifference curves. Number one is that indifference curves are downward sloping, meaning that they move from top going down. And here, this means that if total utility is to remain unchanged throughout the curve, then more of one product means less of the other. For a consumer, suppose we are looking at X and Y, for a consumer to take in more of X, it means he or she has to give up some of the units of Y. And if a consumer wants to take in more of Y, he or she has to give up some of the units of X. This tells us that then for one to take in more, uh, he has to give up less, then the graph we are drawing is downward sloping. The second property is that indifference curves are convex to the origin. Now, if we draw such an indifference curve, which is convex to the origin, it will look like that. So meaning this indifference curve, we can label it I, meaning indifference curve 1. So this number here has no meaning, it's just used to distinguish between or among different indifference curves. So, if indifference curves are convex to the origin, then what we're saying is that uh, the slope of the indifference curve diminishes or becomes flatter as we move from top left to right bottom along the curve. Slope of an indifference curve is called the marginal rate of substitution, meaning we are looking at how much the consumer will be willing to give up in order to get some of the commodities and at what rate is such a, a, an exchange taking place. So we will look at the marginal rate of substitution after the properties and then we'll elaborate more on it. Okay. The third uh, property is that the higher indifference curves represent a higher level of utility than lower indifference curves. Now, recall from the previous uh, set of indif uh, an indifference map that we had, we had indifference curves from 1 all the way to 4, and we said the higher the indifference curve, the more the utility a consumer will generate. However, we can still uh, represent that here, that uh, indifference curve 2 has more utility compared to indifference curve 1. And in this case, D and E have higher satisfaction levels than A, B, and C. But it should be noted that D and E have equal levels of utility. A, B, and C have equal levels of utility. The fourth property is that indifference curves cannot cross each other. This is because of the assumption of transitivity that we made in the previous video. What this means is that uh, if you have uh, indifference curves drawn in this manner where we have points or bundles A, B and C, you will notice that bundle A and bundle C are on the same indifference curve. And according to this theory, they yield equal satisfaction to the consumer. Note also that bundle B and bundle C are on the same indifference curve 1. 
which means that they give the consumer equal satisfaction. However, bundle A and bundle B are on different in different scales. Bundle A is on indifference scale 2 and bundle B is on a lower indifference scale 1, which means that A yields more utility to the consumer compared to bundle B. Don't you think this is contradicting itself? Because if A and C have equal utility and B and C have equal utility, it simply means that A and B should also have equal utility. Therefore, because A and B are giving us different utility levels, this gives us a problem in an analysis. Therefore, indifference curves should not cross. Okay, so let's look at uh, the marginal rate of uh, substitution, which is the rate at which the consumer is willing to exchange one good for an additional unit of another good and still be able to get the same level of utility. Given the commodities X and Y, the marginal rate of substitution will tell us how many units of Y the consumer will need to give up for him or her to get more of good X. In other words, it gives the maximum amount of a good that the consumer is willing to give up in order to gain one additional unit of the other good and still remain on the same indifference curve. Consider uh, two commodities, X and Y. The marginal rate of substitution of X for Y is the amount of good Y that the consumer is willing to give up in order to gain one additional unit of good X and still obtain the same amount of satisfaction. In other words, we're saying it measures the amount of good Y that the consumer should be able to give up or should be willing to give up in order to gain an additional unit of good X and remain on the same level of satisfaction. Now, note the way the uh, marginal rate of substitution has been presented here. MRS X for Y, which means marginal rate of substitution of X for Y. This means that if we, let me just draw it here for, for you. So MRS uh, X, it means that the first letter to come is what you are obtaining. So marginal rate of substitution of X, meaning you are obtaining X for Y. This means you are giving up Y. So this is red, marginal rate of substitution of good X for good Y, which tells us that you are gaining X or you are consuming more of X and you'll be giving up commodity Y. And if you write it the other way, where we have the marginal rate of substitution, marginal rate of substitution of Y, it means that you are now getting Y and then you are giving up X. And we read this as marginal rate of substitution of good Y for good X. Okay. So now, if uh, we write it in an equation form, we find the marginal rate of substitution of X for Y as a ratio of the change in Y to the change in X. And the marginal rate of substitution of Y for X will then be the opposite of this two, change in X over change in Y. So for marginal rate of substitution of X for Y, we measure this as the ratio of the marginal utility of X to the marginal utility of y and then we add a negative. This is because marginal rate of substitution of x for y is the slope of an indifference curve. Therefore, if it's downward sloping, it means that it has to uh, it need to have a negative. Okay. So, let's uh, look at the graphical uh, illustration of MRS. So we have an indifference curve here, indifference curve 1, where the vertical axis measures good Y and the horizontal axis measures good X. Now recall from other uh, uh, units that we looked at that when you want to find the slope of a curve, you need to draw a tangent at a given point and then measure the slope of the tangent at that point. 
In this case, if we want to find the slope of an indifference curve, we need to draw a tangent at any given point of interest and then measure the slope of that tangent. If we do that, it means we have a, a line here which is tangent at this point. And then if we draw uh, the point, we can call it uh, our point E. So at point E here, we have the slope of an indifference curve. And you can see that since the indifference curve is downward sloping and the tangent is downward sloping, it means the slope we'll get here will be negative. And therefore, the marginal rate of substitution at that point E will be negative. So the other thing we can look at is the principle of diminishing marginal rate of substitution. Now, you will notice that when you are moving along an indifference curve from top to bottom, the slope of an indifference curve will be reducing. This is because, look at this tangent. If I was to move the tangent up, it will be tilting, becoming vertical. And if you measure the slope of a vertical line, it will be infinite. However, if you move the slope, the tangent, down the curve, you'll notice that it will be coming flatter and flatter as you move down. And as you reach uh, the bottom here, it will be almost flat and the slope of a flat line is zero. Which means that you are moving from infinite to zero and therefore you will be reducing as you move down the curve. Therefore, the marginal rate of substitution of x for y, which happens to be the slope of an indifference curve, will be reducing or diminishing as you move down the curve. Simply stated, the principle of diminishing marginal rate of substitution states that the marginal rate of substitution of x for y diminishes as more and more of good x is substituted for good y. Now this implies that as the consumer has more and more of a good x of good x he is prepared to forgo less and less of good y This is because to the consumer since he has gotten enough of x then good x becomes less valuable that he will be willing to get more or less of it and since he has less of good y due to the fact that he's given up more of it then good y will now become more valuable and the consumer will be less willing to give up more units and the more of y the consumer gives up the more and the more valuable good y will be this is because both x and good y are desirable Let's look at uh, indifference curves for perfect substitutes. If the consumer has the marginal rate of substitution which is constant throughout the indifference curve, then the two commodities under consideration are said to be perfect substitutes. Now, this is an illustration where we have a downward sloping straight line and uh, the level of increasing utility is moving up and uh, to the right in this direction. So, indifference curve 1 has low uh, utility compared to 2 and the indifference curve 2 has low utility compared to indifference curve 3. We also have uh, perfect complements. So for perfect complements, good are said to be perfect complement, complements if they can be consumed in a pair. For example, a pair of shoes. Or in terms of goods, we can say suppose that you take one bottle of Fanta with three slices of bread, it means that if you increase the bottles of Fanta to two, then you need six slices of bread. In other words, for perfect complements, goods are consumed in a fixed proportion. And drawn, uh, drawing their indifference curves will look like this one here. So they are L-shaped, telling us that the point of consumption is at the corner. When you increase the amount of Y, the other amounts of Y will become less useful and they will only be useful at a corner, meaning the consumer will still do without taking them and only take what is required. And the direction of increasing utility is up and to the right in this direction.
meaning indifference curve 3 has more utility compared to indifference curve 1. We also have another set where we have goods and uh, bads. So note, it is possible that some of the commodities are goods while others are bads. For example, we can have pollution, which is a bad, and fertilizer, which is a good, especially to farmers. Now, think of how the indifference curves of this good of pollution and fertilizer will look like. Try to draw on your own, and then let's compare with what I will present here. Okay, so if you've drawn something that looks like this, then you drew it correct. So what you notice here is that good X is a bad and good Y is a good. And meaning if this is a bad, then the direction of increasing utility will be in this direction. So you move, you need to move to the left. So what you are doing is you are reducing the amounts of X consumed but you'll be more willing to take in more and more of Y. If X was a good and Y was a bad, it means the indifference curves were going to be drawn in the other fashion. So it means that we're going to have curves moving like this. So it was going to be in the redu reducing the amounts of Y and increasing the amounts of X and the direction of increasing utility was going to be in this direction. Okay. So we can also look at the indifference curves for neuters or natural goods. So now it is possible that we do not care about the amount of a given commodity. If we do not care about how much we take in of it, it means that commodity is neutral. For example, the air that we breathe. Nobody minds how much air you take in, and you would want to take in air as much as you can, meaning air becomes a neutral good. Think about the illustration of uh, a neutral good, how the indifference curves will look like. Well, if you thought of them in this manner, then your thoughts were correct. So we have good uh, y and good x in this case the consumer doesn't mind how many units of good x are taken in but the consumer minds the amount of y taken in so it means he can he can take in as much as he wants of x but he will mind on the amount of y being taken in and therefore the level of increasing opportunity will be moving upwards so we can conclude that X yields no utility at all and therefore X is a neutral good. Let's look at uh, indifference curves and the utility functions. So mathematically, an indifference curve is represented as a utility function and we write utility as a function of uh, the given commodities under consideration. Here we have X and Y, meaning utility is a function of good X and good Y. Now, the utility function simply shows the relationship between the utility measures and every possible bundle of goods. Which brings us uh, to this simple illustration. Suppose you had two bundles where each bundle had X and Y. So this is supposed to be X2, not Y2. So I can correct that right from here. Okay. So we have x1, x1, and x2, x2. So if the bundle has x2, x2 uh, is presented, sorry, is preferred to x1, x1, then it means that, sorry, let me just change this drawing and uh, present this one as y2, y1. So instead of having this one as a x1, we can have it as y1. Okay, so what that means then is that uh, we have, if this bundle is preferred, 
if this bundle is preferred then it means that we write x2 y2 is greater this sign looks like greater but it's a greek symbol so we can simply use it and just say greater than x1 y1 meaning this bundle here is preferred to the other bundle okay so common uh, common functions that we use in microeconomics especially for undergraduates include the cobb douglas we also have the perfect substitutes we have the leontief and lastly we have the constant elasticity of substitution now the one that is concave uh, convex to the origin and downward sloping is the cobb douglas the one that we've been presenting then we illustrate we also showed the one for perfect substitutes and the one for Leontief is the one for perfect complements. Then we also have constant elasticity of substitution, which I will leave for uh, second year microeconomics. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. Please, if you have any questions, uh, drop me an email at uh, muawelias at gmail.com. And I'll be sharing with you the link for YouTube where you can watch the video at your free time. Thank you.